Raising money is relatively easy compared to everything else you do. It ultimately comes down to human interaction, interpersonal um, relationships, and it is the laws of attraction. So to the extent that you are attractive to uh, funding sources, you are going to get approached. You know, and I don't mean that in the physical, superficial sense. I mean that in terms of building something that's really meaningful, building something that people are talking about, building something that's taking off, uh, building something that people want to join. You know, people start hearing about you know, companies we've invested in, for example. They start losing people to the new startup that's down the road. We want to know what startup that is. right? So do what you do very well, and you will start to become attractive, and that's the best way to approach them. When my first company, I would, you know, we would raise a little bit of money and we'd be like very British about it. So like, oh, we'll raise like a couple hundred thousand, you know, half a million, like small raise. And then we'll, we'll, we'll have some milestone and we, we'll wait to prove that out till before we even dare to talk about another raise because like, you know, we didn't say, we hadn't done what we had said yet. But that's not the way that the kind of US companies that end up being successful, they just, they're always raising, you know, they're going for big raises all the time, right? And I just sort of realized that actually this is a self-fulfilling prophecy because obviously if you've got all of that money, Money and that runway and that leeway, you, you've got much more time to figure out how, you know, correct Together. your mistakes. So you, you actually, in the end, you end up becoming more successful, partly because you've projected more success. So it's this weird thing of like just being a little bit more ambitious and, and brave about, uh, about, you know, what you're claiming to do and what you're doing, not go into kind of hype, because that doesn't help, but actually just in terms of um, projecting your, your, the ambitions of what you're going to try and do. You can't cut corners, you can't just take on anybody once you get to a certain size. Because I can promise you now, every conversation we've had with an investor has been based around real numbers on a piece of paper rather than, wow, you're a great person and you know, we believe in your team, we're gonna give you a million pounds. You know, do you have management meetings? Do you have board meetings? Do you have your financial reports? Who is your accountant? Who's your lawyer? Can you do this? Can you do that? And you need to be thinking from day one how you're gonna build a team that can deliver these things for you so that you are a company and not a great idea. This is one of my all-time favorite ones when you see like somebody write, my, mar my market size is every single mobile user in the planet. And it's like, well, what, are you, what are you making? Well, I'm making an app for uh, uh, iPhones that uses the M7 coprocessor and tracks people's movements when they're running marathons. But my market size is every single mobile user in the planet. No, 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 hold on a second. It's sports people who are highly motivated to log their data in the quantified self sense and have an iOS phone and oh, it has to be the 5S because there's only one with M7. And understanding the difference between a large market and your actual market makes a big difference in your credibility when you're speaking to investors. We raise money without PowerPoint, without being entrepreneurs, without knowing anything about the internet, knowing nothing about e-commerce, not knowing, not being tech. What we did good, I think, is first of all, uh, we didn't have to prove there was a market for this. We're taking a business model that was already present in the US. So the market is there, that's in the mind of the investor, that wasn't an issue. People believe, okay, this is a market and this can be a market that is profitable. The thing then, when you, you don't have to prove the market, becomes the team, right? My partner was working at that time, so John uh, was working in private wealth. We use the connections that we have to actually raise the first round. Uh, and then through those connections and start knowing more people in the, in the startup arena. Uh, so we actually contact them and at the end uh, we were able to engage some of them. Don't underestimate the pain you're going to go through if you have the wrong investors. You're going to have a closer relationship to them than you have with your co-founders. Co-founders can break up. Your investors, you can leave, but that's it. You're not going to get rid of them. And so finding the right people who you have the right chemistry with, who see things the same way, who have a strong enough position in their firm to get things to happen and to be there for you when things go bad is what matters the most. And I know it feels like I just need to raise the money. It doesn't really matter who it is. Trust me, it matters.